Hey everyone, how's it going? Today is Thursday tip of the week. I wanted to do something a little different and I know you all want to shoot with artificial lighting and believe me, I get it. There's a million reasons why you would want to shoot with artificial lights, but the one thing most likely stopping you and stopping everyone else is, well, they're expensive. The strobes are expensive, the modifiers are expensive, the light stands are expensive. I mean, label something photography gear and all of a sudden the price triples. But in this video, I got you covered. So, let's get started. Okay, so a little bit about the light. It's an HDX 500 watt halogen light. It's just your average typical work light. I got it at Home Depot for less than $20 and there was actually a cheaper one, a 250 watt light, but I went with a 500 watt because I'm hoping that it'll pump enough light into my scene so I can use an aperture of f5.6 or f8 at ISO 100. I'm, I'm hoping it'll get me there. Just to give you some contrast, my video lights are 300 watt lights and I'm having to open up my camera to 2.8 at ISO 400, I believe. So, you know, 500 watts and not big difference, but I'm hoping that it'll get me close. You know what I just noticed? What's that? It's not a light stand hole, so I guess the plan is to hang it on the shelf. Okay, two things about this light real quick. One, it gets instantly hot. I mean, really hot. So be careful not to touch any of the metal bits. And two, it's not daylight balanced, so you'll have to change the white balance either in camera or back in the computer in post. This really wouldn't be a budget shoot if I used my Canon 5D and lenses. Besides, I know a lot of you are using your phone for food photography, but I'm gonna cheat just a little bit and use this nifty super clamp and my tripod to hold the phone above the table for me. All right, I'll slide this stand in right here. I'll tap on the screen to make sure it's in focus and slide the exposure down a bit and then take a snap. Now, right away, I knew the light was gonna be really hard. Okay, so to fix that, I usually grab this large oval diffuser and place it between my light and my camera. That softens up those highlights and softens up those shadows. And it's really not that expensive. It's actually pretty budget in its own right. It's only around $50. But not today. No, no, no. Today, I'm busting out the parchment paper. I think a roll would have worked better, but hey, these are even squares. So judging the thickness, I think I'll double up and then staple them together. I need to cover the entire table, so I'll make maybe three rows of two. Now I'm just gonna clamp this paper onto this extension arm. You'll need to find something to hang yours on as well. And actually a cheap alternative is like an old white bed sheet that you could double up and maybe hang on a curtain rod. Yeah, this is working really well to spread that hard light out and make those shadows and highlights just so much softer. In this shot with the parchment paper, you can just see the subject so much better. I mean, side by side, there's really no comparison. Now I've got two little simple tips for you about working with artificial lighting. The first is to turn off every other light in your studio or your kitchen or your living room, wherever you're working at. That way you don't introduce any other color temperatures or light directions into your scene. The second is be careful of your ceiling and your walls because that light is gonna reflect off of them and bounce back into your photograph, filling in the shadows, ruining that contrast and flattening out your image. Now to combat this, you can simply use two of these budget foam cores from the art store, place one on top and one over here, create a little box and you're good to go. Well, I think that's it. I'm ready to style my final image, so I'll see you in a second. All right, I think we're all set. This budget artificial light test is ready to go and we can start making this pizza image. I'll just bring down the exposure here and set the focus as best I can on this pizza. And that's pretty good. I mean, I'll have to go into the computer and spruce it up a bit, but 
the light's not actually that bad for costing less than 30 bucks. I know a lot of you are using a kit lens, so I decided I would throw on my 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens and you can see the results. Okay, so it's really hard to judge how this cheapo light and this parchment paper diffuser worked without comparing it against my normal gear. So I'm gonna remake the image using the 500 watt Elenchrome mono light, dish reflector, 20 degree grid, the Canon 5DS, 50 millimeter f1.2 L lens, and the diffuser. Okay, right off the bat, I can tell that the light from the strobe is just much crisper. Of course, that could have to do with the lens and the resolution. Overall though, not a huge difference. I mean, I'm not gonna go run out and sell all my gear, but for under $30, if you're on a budget or if you're just starting out, this is a great option. Here are the two side by side after a small post-production. But I can tell you going into this, I had my doubts, but this budget gear turned out a great image. But hey, if you wanna check out both of the images in greater detail side by side, the full article will be on weetogether.com. I'll place the link in the description below. But that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a subscribe, a thumbs up, a comment in the section below, and I'll see you in the next one.